Hello and welcome to the start of my vacation vlog. If you are here for my Zodiac Academy vlog, this is pretty much right where I ended on the last one. And I'm about to pack to go to Florida to my parents for two and a half weeks. I will be working part of the time while I'm there remotely. Um, but the other time, I'll just be chilling in between Christmas and New Year's and really just like relaxing, having a great time. So I'm here to tell you what I am packing in my suitcase. So Zodiac Academy 7, Heartless Guy, just came out today and I haven't read it yet because I'm in the middle of a few things and the paperback is arriving tomorrow at my parents. So on the plane ride tomorrow, I'm gonna be pretty tired, I think, but I'm gonna download it on Kindle Unlimited and start it on the plane. It's a 938 page book, so I don't think I'll get that much far into it on the plane. Also, I'll probably be tired because I'll stay up late tonight, so maybe I'll just sleep. Um, that being said, I have other books that I am going to pack. But first, let's talk about the few books that I have been reading since I finished the last Zodiac Academy book. So after I finished that book, I picked up Dipped in Holly by Dana Islay. It was on my December TBR, and it is a smutty little Christmas novella. It's about Holly. She gets dumped in a bar, and the silver fox, Nick, that owns the bar and her have a one night stand and it's just Christmas smutty novella fun. Then I picked up Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. This is about a nun who must work with a revenant which is a demon bound to a powerful object um, and no one knows how to wield it. And so she must learn from the revenant itself and it's such a really powerful story. I love the world and kind of like the church aspect going on here because the nuns and priests are there to like deal with this problem of like spirits infesting the world and Margaret Rogerson is one of my favorite authors. I just love every second of this and it's going to be a duology. It's her first duology so I'm very excited about it and so my plan is to finish this tonight before I have to leave. So it's 387 pages and I'm on page 237 so really not too much to read in a night and after I finish filming this I'm going to pack and then relax. Obviously I am bringing my Kindle with me so that I can access all sorts of books electronically. We'll see what I end up picking up on there because the sky's the limit. For physical books, the other um, YA book I wanted to get to in December was Jade Fire Gold by June C. L. Tan. I've heard it gives Zutara vibes and I absolutely need those kinds of vibes in my life. Anyways, I will probably get to this after Heartless Sky if I'm not too heartbroken. Maybe a Smutty novella in between. Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey for a Christmas rom-com. And then I think this is the last of the Christmas rom-coms I wanted to get to because I also read Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Roberts today while I was on the train because I went out with my friend Taz and we explored Boston and it's a very short novella. So I read it to and from and it was just smutty goodness that I come to expect from my queen, Katie Robert. Then I have Midnight Girls by Alicia Jacinka. This is the one that I don't know if I'll get to it, but I do want to. It's a sapphic romance in which there's the two girls that are witches and they're competing for the prince's heart, but then they end up maybe falling in love with one another. And it's supposed to be really good. I love the cover and I want to read it. Moving on to what I'm planning to read in January, King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett Sinclair is definitely on my list. So I have this hardcover here, a little print that came with it, uh, and a signature. And this is about a woman that has to marry the vampire king in order to save her people. I really want to get into her as an author because I've heard her Hades and Persephone series is really good and I think I would be something that I would like. So I'm going to start here since it's her newest and most hyped book and then continue on from there. Then the last book that I'm going to bring is a last minute edition because someone gifted this to me for Christmas. The note says, I hope you enjoyed this book. It's one of my most anticipated. Thank you for bringing so many good books into my life from your videos. Happy holidays from Izzy. Izzy, I don't know who you are, but thank you so much for this book. I'm so excited to read this one. I've been seeing it everywhere and I love it. So please like reach out and let me know who you are so I can properly say thank you. Um, but yeah, I, this is about um, a woman who has to go back to Spain for her sister's wedding and she basically has told her parents that she has a boyfriend and her rival coworker that she despises agrees to be her date to this wedding. And I've heard it's just 
Chef's Kiss Wonderful will be a great book to read while I'm sitting by the pool. Bringing only five physical books on a trip to Florida is like unheard of for me. I usually pack my entire bookshelf. So I'm trying to be good. And the fact that I have the Kindle is why I am more sparse than what I'm packing. Some other books I wanted to talk about real quick. I got these two books from Keely for Christmas. She got me The Heart Principle by Helen Hong. And this says, Merry Christmas, love you from Keely. And then The Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson says, obviously I had to get you Dance of Thieves, buddy read from Keely Joe. And this is because Keely loves The Remnant Chronicles, which I need to read. So when I was with Taz at Barnes and Noble, we were being bad influences on each other and encouraging each other to buy things. So I was like, you know what? I kind of want to maybe start a historical romance collection. I am tight on space and I just unhauled a bunch of stuff, but I don't know. I was like, you know what? I know that I love Tessa Dare. So maybe I'll just like collect one book from like each historical romance author that I really like. And The Duchess Steel is like, I feel like a staple in historical romance. It's one of the only historical romances that I've read, so I really need to read more. I do read them mostly on my Kindle though, but I wanted to get this one by Lisa Kleypas called Chasing Cassandra just because of the step back and it reminded me of Cinderella and like if you don't know Cinderella is like my all-time favorite movie from childhood I used to watch it like a bajillion times a day so whenever I see like a Cinderella thing I just feel very connected to it so I was like you know what let me just pick this one up and oh my goodness uh, I did not realize how cheap they are they're only eight dollars because they're mass market paperbacks so I understand now why people have huge historical romance collections because they are so cheap to buy. I get it. I get it. So is this the start of a huge historical romance collection for me? I don't know, but I 2022 is going to be the year that I become a historical romance girly. That's all I'm going to say. I have some on my January TBR. So we'll see. And as far as like my TBRs go for 2022, I want to try and balance them between a bunch of different genres that I enjoy reading. So like one to two fantasies, could be adult or YA, a bunch of like smutty romance that's fast to read, and um, at least one historical romance a month, if not more. Um, and then from that, I can be kind of flexible, but those are my plans. All right, so this intro clip has gone on a little bit too long, but those are the plans before I get on vacation. So see you guys from Florida. So I have arrived in Florida. It's kind of dark. Hold on. That's not quite better. Okay. Anyways, so there's no natural light right now, so bear with me. However, I read two books on the plane yesterday, two novellas. It was My Dad's Best Friend and Seducing My Guardian by Katie Robert. Short, sweet, smutty. That's all that you could really want. And so now that I'm here and my goal this vacation is to just watch as much as I want because like I have been so behind on watching all the TV shows I want to watch this year and read. So on the reading front, I'm reading Vesper Teen. I thought I was going to finish this before I got here, but I did not because I procrastinated on packing. I'm on page 312, so that's like about 80... 6% or something like that, so I really do not have much left of this. I'm probably going to finish it very shortly. I love this so much. I love the world building of like the nuns and Artisma. It's just someone that's dealing with a lot of like trauma and social anxieties and things like that. And I just really love seeing her become this really like badass, powerful person, even though she doesn't think that she is. And I love the Revenant. It's so sassy like if you like silas's character in sorcery of thorns you're gonna love the revenant and i feel like there's gonna be a big twist at the end and i don't know what it is yet like i don't have any predictions so i am hoping i'm gonna be pleasantly surprised so this book and jade fire gold are my two like ya books that i have on deck for december however there's a few other things that i want to read first so as soon as i finish this this finally came in the mail it was delayed yesterday and I was devastated because I thought it was going to arrive and it didn't, but it is here. Oh my god, it's so big. Oh, it's a little damaged, but that's okay. Heartless Sky, Zodiac Academy 7. The 
the print is so tiny because it's actually fully 900 something pages but um in order to fit it like with the independent printer it has to be under 700 pages oh this one was actually made in orlando that's nice so it's the physical copy is just 712 pages but like the uh candle copy is 938 pages i have a whole vlog on my channel reading the first six books plus a companion book in the series i absolutely love it and i feel like it's gonna be devastating and heartbreaking and because i have all this vacation time like i'm gonna be like dedicating myself to reading through this and i feel like i'm just gonna like devour it and i finally have like the time to dedicate to devouring it then so i will discuss my plans for after that later because i feel like it's just gonna all be all encompassing and i don't want to you know think too much beyond it because i feel like i'm gonna be devastated after the end so on terms of what i am watching me and my mom started shadow and bone and we're about to watch another episode now it's like the afternoon and then we'll probably watch more tonight there's only eight episodes so we can get through it pretty quickly we watched two episodes last night and i literally had chills watching it seeing this series that i love come to life like i think that the atmosphere is really good and i'm really enjoying the storyline so far and i know why have i waited so long to freaking watch this show i don't know but i'm excited to be finally watching it and i'm glad i'm kind of watching it while i'm on vacation i have time to just kind of like binge it the other thing i want to talk about real quick is that i went to ulta and spent too much money because i have been watching all these tiktoks of drugstore makeup products and I wanted to try some, so I'll do a little haul. So this is not your mother's curl talk, curl activating mousse. This is the mousse that I use in my hair and I just wanted to pick one up to have here so I don't have to bring my hair products back and forth. I have e.l.f. putty blush because I really wanted to try a blush that has the putty look to it. Um, I think it just looks like very hydrating on the skin. I got this ColourPop Shimmer Shadow because it was $6 and I love Shimmer Shadow. It's in the color Sail Away. I got this e.l.f. Je Jelly Pop Glow Stick. So if you look, it's like, let's see. Yeah, so it's like this glow and it's, they probably do not have the lighting to see that on my hand, but it smells like watermelon and it's just like a roll-on highlighter love i got la girl shockwave metallic eyeliner in this white to go underneath the eyes for brightening i got l'oreal voluminous primer base because i want to see if using a primer actually does help my mascara last longer and the mascara i've been using regularly is either sky high by maybelline or lash princess by essence i love both of them a lot and yeah i bought a replacement one because my other one was dried out then i got a new concealer which is pretty fresh by ColourPop. i have some other concealers but they weren't full coverage and this one is full coverage so i decided to try it out as you can see i went a little overboard because like it's a drugstore I got this NYX Fill and Fluff Eyebrow Pencil in Auburn. This is what I use every day and I forgot to pack it, so I bought one. Brighten Up Banana Powder by Essence, which is supposed to just go like in your under eyes and stuff in places you want to brighten up and get a soft finish. And I saw this on TikTok and I really wanted to try it. My NYX HD Finishing Powder because I just needed a setting powder and I've owned three of these. This is the third one and they just keep breaking when I drop them from high heights. It's not there's anything wrong with them. Oh, I've got this L'Oreal True Match Nude because I've been seeing it literally everywhere. I got it in the lightest shade and so we will see how this goes on my skin. And the last thing that I got is this elf liquid glitter eyeshadow in pinky swear because i really like the styla glitter shadows and this looks like a dupe for it and i like elf as a brand so i decided to try it and that that is what i got at ulta today went a little crazy so yeah i'm gonna be finishing i'm gonna be watching an episode of shadow of bone finishing vespertine and starting heartless sky in between all that i'm gonna be editing my vlog but besides that it's just gonna be a chill day catching up on youtube content tv shows and books so like my ideal life hello so i have been watching shadow and bone the tv show and i am 
obsessed with it. It's so good. I don't know why it took me this long to watch it, but it's kind of nice that it's part of my like relaxation. And it's so funny because I was watching with my mom and she actually guessed like a big plot point like pretty early on, but then they revealed that big plot point in that episode earlier than like in the books. So it's so interesting and like I reread book one in Shadow and Bone before the TV show aired even though I didn't watch it until now. So I have like all the details of that in my brain and I've read Six of Crows like closer in time. So I know the details of that pretty well. But I forgot a lot about like the second and the third books in the Shadow and Bone trilogy so I'm going to reread those like before those seasons come out. And um, I'm actually really impressed with the show. I just like have butterflies every time I watch it because I'm like, oh my god, like these moments that are so big in the books are coming to life on the screen. And I absolutely love the intertwining of Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone. And like we actually get like some of the crows and Alina like together on the screen for a few moments. And I just think it's like being handled really well. And Lee Bardugo is an executive producer on it. So like... I feel like it's just elevating the series a lot and you know kind of when you get a chance to go back and take a work and put it in a new format like you get to add layers to it things that you would do differently now as you've matured versus when you first wrote it so I feel like we're getting more layers to the story and I definitely feel like that is reflected in the way that Alina and Mao's relationship is working out because I'm all about Alina and Mao whereas like Mao in the books kind of annoyed me but the way that he's being played and the things that his character are doing are less so annoying and I'm more like wow this is like the supreme friends to lovers ship so I just think it's so well done and um Nina and Matthias have such good chemistry but also Kaz and Inej have really good chemistry but it's like more subtle and then we have not seen any of Wyland yet. I don't think he's been cast and no Nikolai yet. So I'm very looking forward to season two. I think it's just going to be fun to follow along with the show. And like, I have my theory about like the way that they're going to wrap the shows together. Like, I think it's going to be Shadow and Bone, Six of Crows prequel in season one. Season two is going to be Siege and Storm, Six of Crows combined. Season 3 is going to be Rune and Rising and Crooked Kingdom. And then from there, Season 4 will be King of Scars, Rule of Wolves. And then maybe continue on with the Crow storyline in the books that have yet to be written. But I think it will be interesting to see like how that plays out with the shifting of who the main characters are. So, I don't know. But it's really fun. On the book-ish front... I am on page 206 of this behemoth of a book and I think my plan for tonight is to get halfway through so let's see that's 353 so that's 150 pages more than where I am at now and I think if I stay okay well it's kind of late but if I stay up for a while I think I can my plans but anyways the beginning is a little slow but we just got some action and some characters have come back into the picture that they were not there anymore so I'm excited and looking forward to keep reading hello so let me give you an update on what I have been reading for the past few days literally all it's been is Zodiac Academy Heartless Sky this book is humongous in print it's 707 pages with the print this small um but the Kindle version is 938 pages. So this is a pretty much almost a thousand page book. So clearly it's taking me a long time to get through it. I'm on page 471 right now out of 707 in the print version. And it's more of the amazing stuff that I love. But like I'm just getting scared because everyone is posting about the ending saying how like literally earth shattering it is and usually their endings are just so cliffhangery and like we're gonna have to wait like almost a year for the next book in this series so I don't know I don't know but because it's Christmas Eve I'm gonna take a break from this book and I normally wouldn't do that but I have Christmas books that I need to read and I know after tomorrow 
I'm not gonna wanna read them anymore. So today I'm gonna be reading Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey, but first I'm gonna be reading a smutty Christmas novella. This is just the screensaver, but I read Scream for Us by Molly Doyle, which is a really short Halloween reverse harem novel and now the second one melt for us is out and this is the christmas version and it's the holiday mask men um i did enjoy it i thought it was like pretty spicy but i only gave it three stars because while i am all in for stories going off the rails i really like there to be some sort of like motivation for that to happen and it just seems like these characters just did things with like no underlying character motivations as to what they were doing it i mean it is a novella but i would like have liked to see the characters develop a little bit more to make their actions make sense instead of them just going through the motions but I enjoyed the spice so like I'm definitely gonna read the next one because I just thought it was like a really enjoyable easy read to breeze through and was very spicy and then this one is by my queen Tessa Bailey I have been waiting literally since I got this to read it and I think Christmas Eve is the perfect time to start this and I'll probably read it through to tomorrow and it's a grumpy sunshine but the woman is the grump um, and she designs window displays and the man is the owner of the Vivant department store so I just think it's so cute I also like love this book size like it's tiny it's cute it's adorable um Tessa Bailey usually publishes traditionally but this is actually independently published I guess maybe because she wanted it out in time for the Christmas season without having to go through the hoops of traditional publishing so I love it. There's also a little poem on the back. I read it out loud in my December TBR video if you're so interested. Also, I got all my makeup from Ulta that I hauled the other day. I put them on with the e.l.f. Um, yeah, so some things I want to point out is I did the e.l.f. shadow thing and I love it. It's like pretty much an exact dupe for the Stila glitter shadows, um, but way cheaper. It's like $7 versus like $27. And I put on my regular mascara, but I put on the lash mascara primer first and even if it's not like the same brand like I definitely think it helped to elongate the lashes so I will definitely be doing mascara primer from now on because I really think it makes a big difference um and then the other thing that I want to talk about is the L um the NYX HD finishing powder I've been having a lot of issues with my skin getting kind of oily but I feel like this like sets the makeup in really nicely and it just gives it like a soft focus nice blur effect so i'm really happy with my purchases and the fact that i'm pretty sure mostly all of the makeup that i have on my face is a drugstore so that's wonderful uh, we love makeup on a budget i feel like back in the day drugstore makeup just wasn't as good as high end um because i was always like oh they cut it with so much alcohol blah, blah blah but i feel like that's changing nowadays with tiktok marketing and things like that like i feel like you can get and a lot of like those smaller brands that are starting at like low price points but have good quality products show that you can have good quality products at low price points. Um, and basically that like designer brands have been marking up their prices for like forever. Um, so now they have to compete with things that are putting out good quality and lower price points. So I feel like drugstore makeup is getting way better than it was in the past like by a landslide. So I'm really happy with the products that I have on my face and I feel like it gives me like a good put together look um at a good price point so can't be mad about that so yes yeah, so today i'm gonna go help my mom bake some cookies and then i'm gonna i'll probably read the novella first and then read window shopping and then if i finish those i will return to zodiac academy but i think it might be a while um until i return to this um because these will probably take me most of the day so probably tomorrow i'm like just so scared for this ending like it's not gonna be happy <laughs> and i'm afraid <laughs> Christmas I'm spending my time out by the pool it just has a solar cover on it because it's getting super warm while hi Fiona while we wait for it to warm up but today my plans are to read smutty Christmas novels because it's Christmas it is the time of the year and also I'm at 143 of books read for the year so I want to get to 150 because like I'm so close so I am going to read some smutty novellas. So first of all, I'm going to finish window shopping. I read to page 158 so far and I'm really loving it. I love Tessa Bailey. Like she just does a really good job of making a very good emotional connection to the characters and also the men also have very good dirty talk. Love that. Then I'm going to read 
two novellas. One I saw was a Monsters Naughty List, which is a standalone Christmas fantasy romance, so I'm gonna try that. And then I might do Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert. It is 200 pages, so it's a little bit longer than what I would normally want to read for like a novella, but I've heard really good things. I mean, I have read Talia Hibbert before, so I kind of want to try that because I she's an author that I know that I love, and this would be the only time of the year that I would really read it. So I'm just going to continue tanning out by the pool and reading my books and having a wonderful Merry Christmas. So I have about 100 pages left of this and I'm literally terrified. So let's see, um, we're about to get to the final battle sequence and I know the ending is literally going to be like heartbreaking. <laughs> so like I'm afraid to read it. Um, but some updates on other stuff that I read. So I ended up not reading Mary Infamous because I was tired on Christmas and I figured I'd read like a different short thing to get my goal up right now I'm at 146 books so I have a few days to get to a hundred and fifty so once I finish this it'll be 147 um so something I read and I didn't mention is a therapy game by Maguru Hinohara and this is a BL manga it came wrapped it has explicit content um Maddie sent this to me because she's like, you need to experience this. Um, and it was interesting. It was a new world. So and this only has two volumes, so I guess I'm going to get the other volume and read it. But now I have experience to be a manga. Um, I actually went to Barnes & Noble the other day for their sale of all hardcovers. And I didn't find anything that I wanted because I'm trying to be like conservative on um, book buying. And... They just didn't have anything that I would have bought in hardcover. They didn't have, and I was like, well, I'm not going to buy it if it's not on sale. There's this huge sale. So I ended up not getting anything. I was going to look for a manga, and I wanted, like, the next volume of Waiting for Spring or, like, either the next one in this or something, and they didn't have anything that I was looking for. So I was like, well, I guess I'm not getting anything. But my sister got stuff, so it wasn't a complete fail. Um, so after this, I'm going to need to console myself, I think, because... Like, it's just going to be a heartbreaking 100 pages. Um, so I'm going to take a little break first because I have been making bookmarks on Canva because I didn't have any bookmarks with me when I came. And then I just started making so many of them. They are so fun to design. I'm not, like, opening a shop or anything like that. I'm just making them for myself. So I have them being printed at CVS right now. Um, and then I got them printed on 4x6 and they're 3x2, so then I'm going to get a paper slicer and just slice them and from there, um, glue them together. And that's going to be my bookmark, so I will show the process of that once I go get them from the store. Also, I'm really loving my foundation today. It looks really good, especially on camera. Um, it's the new L'Oreal True Match Nude, which I think I showed in a previous clip of my haul. So yeah, so I have to go to Michael's and CVS and get that stuff. And then I'm also doing bullet journaling. Um, I'm not going to do too much yet because we're going to my grandma's for a few days and I'm not going to bring all my supplies. So when I get back, that's going to be when I'm going to be doing the majority of my like end of the year journaling and setting up my 2022 bullet journal. But so far, I... I'm gonna do one spread before I go, maybe two, um, and that's going to be the, like, I printed out pictures of all the book books that I've read this year, and I'm just gonna tape them in and be like, all the books that I read in 2021, because I love seeing, like, all of the covers all in one. It's really fun, and yeah, I just am really happy that I stuck to my bullet journaling all year this year. I actually have two for the year, and I'm starting a brand new journal in 2022, and it's just a really fun time. So with that being said, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cry. Um, so I think after this, I'm gonna read a novella. And the novella that I'm gonna read is one that I've had for forever on my Kindle, and that is Go Deep by Rilsey Adams. And this is about a smut author that is lacking some inspiration. And so her and her best friend act out some scenes for inspiration so it's kind of like meta but i like it it's only like 131 pages so easily readable within a day and that will get my total once i finish this one up to 148 and then 
I'm gonna see the next book that I'm gonna read after this next big book is gonna be Jade Fire Gold. So I'm gonna read that one next and then we'll see if I can fit in another full length novel or I'll just read another novella. But like a 100 page novella is pretty readable within a day. So that's all for now. Well, I finished and I need three to five business days to process what just happened. This is the worst, the worst cliffhanger in the series and the cliffhanger after book number five was really bad. And there's no more books to read. And this is the longest book too. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna like have to sit with it for a while. I'm not gonna start a new book right away. I'm gonna go work on my crafts and stuff, but um, I'm in pain. So it's been a while since I did like an actual vlog clip because I went to my grandma's and I've just been like busy and haven't been putting makeup on and I went to the beach a few days and I didn't want to vlog when I didn't have makeup on because my skin has been going through some rough times lately and I don't feel great when I don't have that covered so usually I feel confident enough to go on camera sans makeup but I have not been feeling confident in this break. 
it happens. I'm gonna go to a dermatologist and hopefully my skin issues will clear up, but sometimes you just need to go to the doctor. Okay, so what have I been reading? So I finished Heartless Sky and had my heart ripped out of my chest, literally, and after that, the next book that I finished was Go Deep by Rosie Adams. So I wanted to get to 150 books for this year and I did it. I reached 150, very happy about that. So Go Deep is a friend's two lovers novella. It's about um, Navi who is a struggling erotic romance writer and basically she her, she's been getting these reviews that her novels are tired and uninspiring and so she asks her best friend to have sex with her to give her some motivation and I like that it was friends to lovers but it wasn't like there was pining before that it just like they just kind of happened to fall into like this situation so it was really sweet and I just thought very well done um and I'm definitely looking forward to reading more novellas from Rilzy and then next I started and finished Jade Fire Gold by June Sale Tan and I loved this it definitely has Avatar The Last Airbender vibes with um Elemental Magic and we're following on who is um she basically has no memory of her past and she's found as a child and she's just living in this dusty village um and then when her her secret power is accidentally exposed she gets captured and then we have Alton who um, was the prince of the Shi Empire and then his family was murdered and now he has vengeance in mind and then when he encounters on he realizes that she he can use her powers to accomplish what he needs to get done and it very much gives Zutara vibes. It gave what it was supposed to give. I loved the world, the powers, and just kind of like this journey of self-discovery that On goes on. I thought that there was a lot of really good twists and turns and it didn't necessarily follow the same formulaic pattern that a lot of YA novels follow. So I felt like it was really um, refreshing and I really enjoyed it um, because of that. So I gave this a five stars. Oh, and I gave Go Deep four stars. And then I finished off the year reading The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas, which is literally a new favorite of mine. It's definitely going to make my top 10 of 2021. This is like the perfect rom-com. We have Catalina and Aaron and they work together and basically like ever since Aaron started working there. Yes, this is Fiona. Yeah. Oh, she's running away. Hi, hi. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. You wanna play? Okay. Fiona, you want to play? Oh. <laughs> Is she doing the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she turned on the light. Oh, look, 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 look. You are not eating this. I'll tell you that much. Okay, so back to this. So Catalina and Aaron hire co-workers, blah, blah blah, they hate each other, or so it seems, and then Catalina needs a date for her sister's wedding because her ex-boyfriend is the best man. And she basically told her family back in Spain that like she has an American boyfriend, and so Aaron is like I will go with you to this wedding and it's a fake date, enemies to lovers, just all the tropes that I love, but like it was just so good. Like Aaron is such like a caring like man and like he just really cares about Catalina and like it just gave me all of the warm and fuzzies and I feel like okay, maybe this is just me. On TikTok people are like, oh my god, I want the spiciest book ever. And like if it's not spicy, like I don't want it. Well, like romances like these like rom-coms are usually not super spicy like they're like one to three chili peppers but that doesn't bother me i love them because they just give me the warm and fuzzies it just makes me like smile and blush i do like the really smutty smutty stuff like don't get me wrong i read that too but like i don't think we should be trashing romances because they're not as spicy as like erotica smut that is published like they serve two different purposes you know anyways so um after reading this i was like 2022 is my romance era and i'm like 
defining romance as like rom com -y, like ro feel good romances because I don't know if it's technically like a rom com or just like a feel good romance but like I feel like that those are the books that I always 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 love like Spanish love deception love hypothesis like hating game like I love those books so I made a whole like I'm gonna have a whole like anticipated romances list. I've been working on my bullet journaling. I'm sure that there's footage in here of me working on it and I will do like a whole flip through of everything that I do in my journal. But like I have at least like five to six more times of anticipated romances than anticipated fantasy. The fantasy upcoming selection for Q1, Q2, oh, I sound so corporate, um, 2022 is slim pickings and I think that's just because of like supply chain issues and like maybe they've been acquiring less titles because of like less cash flow like I don't know but like whatever is going on in the industry I'm just like not super into most of them and like I will always love fantasy YA or adult um but like I'm just not super into a lot of the titles that I see coming out as opposed to years past and it could be because I am growing away from YA which is nothing that is a fault of the YA genre itself. Like there's definitely more adult fantasies that I'm anticipating, but like the romances, there are so many that I want to read, so many. So anyways, so finish that, this literally absolute new favorite. Now we have The Midnight Girls by Alicia Jacinka. This was one of my last things on my December TBR, which also I finished my December TBR as I wrote it down in my bullet journal. I actually finished it and this year a goal of mine is to have attainable TBRs so making smaller TBRs of the books that I absolutely need to finish and then having room to kind of like mood read towards the end of the month um because what is my TBR but a mood read in the beginning of the month also is anyone not a mood reader like we all have moods anyways okay so Midnight Girls by Alicia Jacinka I have this arc it came out December 28th it is a sapphic like rivals to a lover situation we have these two girls one is midday and one is midnight and they serve the yagas which are the witches and then there's also um morning who is another witch that is involved in this or like a servant to a witch um and they like you know each rule over a certain part of the day or night and they have powers according to that and so the yagas eat princes hearts and so their servants are sent to get them the hearts. So we have Marinka and Zosha. They are like competing to get this prince's heart. And this is them kind of like being drawn to each other while they are like in this huge rivalry to get the prince's heart. And so I'm really enjoying this one. I love like the sapphic yearning. It's great. Um, I'm currently on page 274 of... 338 so definitely gonna finish this day like very close to the end um i was gonna finish it last night and then i just did it <laughs> um and then i have the last physical book that i brought with me to my parents which like when have i ever finished all the physical books i brought with me on a trip never so this is like monumental for me as long as i finish king of battle and blood by scarlet st Clair, which i'm so looking forward to reading this this is the one that i got in the bookish um in the unplugged book box which is just the hardcover edition and it comes with these like really pretty end papers and this um postcard and this signed book plate and this is about isolde who marries the vampire king adrian alexander vasiliv and this by scarlet st Clair, who is famous for her hades and persephone series um and so hopefully this is just like you know my fantasy romance ish that i love so very excited about that um so what i will be doing today is i might go to the stores really quick with my mom work on my bullet journal finish midnight girls um start this and hopefully finish this by tomorrow and then after that i'm on to my january tbr which i have not looked at it in a while so i'm also going to edit that today because that goes up this week um i think i have obviously this book is on here um an ice planet barbarians book which apparently they all got pulled from amazon because like what can happen is when someone pirates books and puts them on pirating sites Amazon detects that the work is elsewhere on the internet and then pulls it off of Kindle Unlimited because Kindle Unlimited is supposed to have exclusive rights to the book. So very annoying. Um, and that's why you shouldn't buy it. And so I don't know if I currently like even have that book to read. 
until that issue gets resolved unless it just keeps it in my kindle unlimited library like because i already had it out i don't know and then another i have a rom-com for this month which is weather girl by rachel lynn solomon really looking forward to that one and then the other thing that i'm reading is i have a bunch of sophie lark on my tbr sophie lark is an author that i want to read through her backlist this year and i'm just really looking forward to it so i'm gonna be doing like a whole sophie lark that's gonna be my next vlog that i do i have all of her books on kindle unlimited and i'm just gonna be vlogging my experience reading them it's going to be wonderful so that should be coming up as my next vlog series and then hopefully this year i kind of want to just post more vlogs because i feel like i kind of fell off with posting them this year um i tended to do like themed ones more instead of just posting a vlog but i think i'm gonna encourage myself to just post vlogs because they're really kind of low effort <laughs> to make like i just have to sit down and talk for like 10 minutes or so a day about like what i'm reading and people love to watch them i've always been making them and they make me happy to make them so that's kind of all that i have planned for today but this is today and then tomorrow is my last full day and then i fly out wednesday morning and then my vacation is over and honestly at this point i am kind of ready to go back to real life it's been a really fun time here at my parents but i miss my boyfriend and my dog and a routine so i'm just gonna soak up the sun for the last two days So this is gonna be the first time that I read any of it. Also my eye lids are very sparkly. Um and I this is like supposed to be a very spicy fantasy romance, which is my genre. You also probably can't hear me that much because of the wind, so we'll see how this comes out in editing, but be treats. So really quick, I'm on page um 102 of king of battle and blood and i am addicted like this is just everything i want if i see a romance it's quick fast paced and i've heard it's not like too many chili peppers but like there's a lot of scenes so that's what i'm looking for in a book um and i really am loving the soul character like she wants to be a queen and rule in her own right and she's like i don't need anyone to like rule with me and she like, wants to go against the standards of her time so obviously she's like in this circumstance where she's now in a marriage so she's like fighting against the restraints of that and she's like i want to be powerful blah, blah blah but adrian is like a vampire who's been alive for 150 years or has ruled for 150 years he was alive for longer than that and he hasn't had a queen in all that time so she's like why me so like there's definitely some sort of connection between them and i don't know what it is but um yeah we just got first the first spicy scene and um wow wow that's all okay it's my last day in florida and i just finished a book that is now my new favorite <laughs> and it's king of battle and blood oh my god this was everything that i could want in a fantasy romance if you like from blood and ash you'll definitely love this it's just like more vampire -y, like more straight up vampires um wow 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 i did talk about it a little bit yesterday when i started but um i read up to like 85 percent last night and it was 3 a.m and then i just finished like the last um 15 percent today and it just got so much more in depth than i thought that it would and it used a trope that i have only ever seen in one other book and in the one other book that trope wasn't like fully resolved yet so i was really intrigued to see like how it was going to be resolved and i just thought it was like 
really well done and this is going to be a trilogy and I'm so excited to read all of it like look at all these tabs um I'm definitely getting on the Scarlet St. Clair hype train I need to read all of her books now her Hades and Persephone series which has books from both Hades and Persephone's POVs which like you know I'm a sucker for like both POVs so um yes I will be reading her backlist um soon I will be acquiring her other books because I need them because I love this so much this gave everything it was going to give it gave the smut it gave the plot it gave like all the paranormal things like there was just such a really good balance of romance and political intrigue plot twists like it was so well done I loved it I loved it so much obviously five stars brand new favorite of mine um, since it's my last day, like, I'm not gonna try and rush to, like, finish a book because, well, I finished all the physical books that I brought with me, so, like, I feel pretty good. I did just lay out my January TBR. That video should be up already. Um, it's a bit more books than I thought I would be setting myself up for for the month because I'm doing my Sophie Lark takes test, but they're all, like, romances, so I think they'll go really fast. So I'm in between starting either Weather Girl or In Bed with a Highlander. Um... I just like don't know how to feel after finishing King of Babylon. <laughs> so like I think I'm gonna start Weather Girl because I just love the Spanish love deception and I want something with like those cutesy vibes. So I think I'm gonna start that and then I can get a review up before it is released on Tuesday, which is very exciting. That's my plan up for now. I'm gonna finish up some few more bullet journal spreads, but that's like really it. Just like doing laundry, getting ready to go back. Like I said in the last few clips, like this has been a long vacation. It's been two and a half weeks. So I am kind of ready to go back to real life and like routine as much as I love spending time with my family. I am, you know, out of my usual routine. So yes, be enjoying the last day, hanging out. I need to catch up on some YouTube videos as well. So I'll be watching YouTube and journaling and just generally enjoying all the things that I love to enjoy. I feel very relaxed and restored after my vacation i got to do a lot of fun things um so yeah, i think this might be the closing out clip unless i start reading another book and have more to say about it but thank you so much for coming along with this vlog please let me know if you want to see more vlogs from me in the future and if you would prefer like weekly vlogs or more like themed vlogs i'm very curious to see like how i want to um keep my vlogs going forward and as always i just enjoy making these videos so leave a little palm tree if you watch this whole video and i hope that you got some good recommendations from this video because i feel like i read so many good things definitely definitely read king of battle and blood if you want fantasy romance and the smash love deception if you want like a rom-com cutesy romance because those are my two favorites of the trip so i have some fun to the next one <laughs>